Let's go to the next step. Each of the bottles mentioned in this question contains 50 ml of liquid. The liquid in any bottle can be 100% pure content, P, or can have certain amount of impurity, I. Visually, it is not possible to distinguish between P and I. Yeah, so we need some tests. There's a testing device which detects impurity as long as the percentage impurity in the content tested is 10% or more. But as 3%, 4%, 7%, it won't. 10 or more, it'll count. For example, suppose bottle 1 contains only P and bottle 2 contains 80% P and 20% I. If content 1 from bottle 1 is tested, it'll be found out that it contains only P. If content of bottle 2 is tested, this will reveal that it contains some amount of I. If 10 ml of content from bottle 1 is mixed with 20 ml content from bottle 2, 10 from this and 20 from that. So 10 ml is pure, 20 from that will have 16 ml of pure and 4 ml impure. So, so 10 plus 16 by 30, that will be the purity content. 10 ml of bottle 1 and 20 ml of bottle 2, the test will show that the mixture has impurity. Yeah, the mixture impurity level is more than 10 percent 30 ml total 4 ml impurity more than 10 percent it will show there is an impurity however if 10 ml of content from bottle 1 is mixed with 5 ml of content from bottle 2 the test will not detect any impurity this is 20 percent impure this 5 ml is one unit of impurity 1 by 15 is less than 10 percent you are mixing in the ratio 1 is to 2 impurity will be detected 2 is to 1 impurity will not get detected the weighted average impurity if it is more than 10, it will get detected. If less than 10, it won't get detected. If you are mixing them in equal quantities, it will be exactly 10, in which case it will be detected. Impurity in the contest, content tested is 10% or more. So it will get detected. Brilliant. 5 ml of content from each of the bottles mentioned in this question contains 50 ml of liquid. 5 ml of content from bottle A is mixed with 5 ml of content from bottle B. The resultant mixture, when tested, detects the presence of A. If it is known that bottle A contains only P, bottle A contains only P. So bottle A is 100% P. P should they are making equal quantities. So the impurity level should be more than 10%, should be less than 80% of P. This is 0% I. If this had 20% I, they are mixing in equal quantities. This should have greater than or equal to 20% impurity. That's what they are saying. What is the best that can be concluded about the volume of I in bottle B? More than 20% should be there. 20% of 50 ml is 10 ml. So at least 10 ml of impurity should be there in bottle B. At least 10 ml, 10 ml. Of bottle A has 0% impurity. You are mixing equal quantities. The average goes 10 or more. The impurity level in B should be 20 or more. 20% impurity is 10 ml, 10 ml or more. Done. Four bottles, each bottle is known to contain only P or only I. They will be considered to be collectively ready for dispatch if all of them contain only P. In minimum, how many tests is it possible to ascertain whether these bottles are collectively ready for dispatch? So, P, 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 P or one of them is I. Very, very seemingly tricky question. It's very easy because the impurity is pure impurity. It's not 5%, 10%, 15%. This. So let's assume there's one impure thing. P, 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 I. What do we do? We'll mix everything. Equal quantities. Equal quantities mix all four. Given that mixture, 25% impurity will be there. That will get detected. So what do we do? So if there is, if, if all of them contain only P, then it will be dispatched. What will we do? We will collect equal quantities from all four, put it in one box and test that. If that one shows impurity, that means there is at least one impurity. Because even if there is one impurity, that will have 25% impurity, one out of four. 25% impurity will get detected. So PPPI will get detected, PPII will get detected, PIII will get detected, IIII will get detected. You take all four, you take all four equal quantities, put them and test them. If detect, impurity is detected, one of the four is impure. If no impurity is detected, then all four are P. It's the simplest way of testing, take equal quantities of all four, put in and detect. In one measurement, we can find the answer. Mainly because whatever is impure contains only impurity, it's 100% impure. 
So even if one out of four bottles is impure, it will show up on the test when you do equal quantity. In one test, we can do this. Four bottles, it is shown that three of the bottles contain only P, 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 and 80% P. What is the minimum number of tests required to definitely identify the bottle containing some amount of I? Very interesting. Let's say this is A, B, C, D. We need to detect not only, we know that three of these bottles contain only P, while well, the remaining one contains 80% P and 20% I. We cannot test all four put together, that's pointless. It will give us, it'll give us not, no impurity, we are dead. We take two, then say, A, if you take three, P, 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 80% P, if you take any three, it will give us no impurity, There's no point. 3 out of 4 will not detect all 4 put together. If you put equal quantities of all 4, no impurity will be detected. If you put equal quantities of 3 out of the 4, no impurity will be detected because P plus P plus P, no impurity. P, P, 0.8 P is 2.8 P out of 3, more than 90% P won't get detected. No point putting 4 together or 3 together. The result is already known. If you take one at a time, test this, first one is pure, second one is pure third one is pure, we can say the fourth one is impure or any time you get impure we can do but if you want to be foolproof then you will take at least three tests. We need to see if we can do it with less than three tests. Only possible option is test two. Take A and B, test. This could turn out to be pure or this could turn out to be impure. If this turns out to be impure, that means one of A and B is impure. Both were pure, this cannot happen. So what do we do? Now test A, we done. Put A and B, mix them together equal quantities, test that. That turns out to be impure. Then out of A and B, one is pure, one is impure. One is pure, other is 80% P. Test A, if A turns out to be pure, B is impure. If A turns out to be impure, we've already got that. If this AB mixture turns out to be pure, that means both of them are pure. Very simple. Test C. If C turns out to be pure, then D is impure. If C turns out to be impure, C is impure. Nice and simple. Take some two bottles, test them, and then test based on that result subsequently. So we should have uh, in two rounds of testing, we can simplify this. So how many, what is the minimum number of tests required to definitely identify two rounds? There are four bottles, it is known that either one or two of these bottles contains only P. The remaining ones contains 0.85 P and 0.15 I, 85% P and 1%, 15% I. So there is one P or two P's, 0.85 P, 0.85 P or P, 0.85 P, 0.85 P, 0.85 P. It is known that either one or two of these bottles contains only P, while the remaining ones contain 85% P and 15% I. What is the minimum number of tests required to ascertain the exact number of bottles containing only P? So it's either this sequence or this sequence. And first of all, if you bait all, all four, put all four, this will come out pure. Put all four, put them together. P, 0.85, P, 0.85 will be 92.5 be pure. This 0.85 into 3 is 2.55 plus 1, 3.55 by 4, this is less than 90%. This will turn out to be impure. Nice. So what do we do? We take equal quantities of all 4. Equal quantities of all 4. Take that. So, put all four equal quantities, put them in. If the outcome is pure, that means we have this two pure and two impure. If the outcome is impure, that means we have this. All four we put together, this will result in impure, this will result in pure. Put all four together and, and test. In one test we can have. Because we know for sure either this or this. Put all four equal quantities, this will result in a negative test impure, this will result in a positive outcome. So with one test we can complete this.